Hi everyone, today I would like to talk about HomeLab. In my case, this is a Kubernetes HomeLab, but there are so many use cases and you can get your own HomeLab super affordably and quickly. And I want to inspire you to do it. So my HomeLab is centered around Kubernetes and it's mostly my playground. I work with Kubernetes. So I experiment a lot, install stuff, but I have also a few applications that are quite useful. Your use case might vary. There's lots of YouTubers and people out there that have essentially mini server farms. My first home lab was running on a refurbished old laptop. So you can span across all kinds of spectra here. So why home lab? Again, the reasons vary. For my use case, this is predominantly driven by the need to experiment safely with Kubernetes and have some of my own uh, useful use cases. But at the end, your idea might be different and you might be motivated to create your own home lab for something completely different, like host an actual useful software or just have a backup services. Regardless of your motivation, the idea that would like you to get from this video is that you can do this right now. You probably have some hardware lying around, an old laptop, Raspberry Pi, whatever it is, you can repurpose it to create a small home lab and play around and learn. So my services here are super simple. I am using Proxmox on a Geekom mini computer. And there on the Proxmox virtualization layer, I have essentially three VMs running Kubernetes, a bunch of services, and I also have NAS in my network. Super simple, nothing crazy. Um, anybody can do it. My Kubernetes cluster is again very simple at this point. It's a simple uh, cluster installed using kubeidm, one control plane node, two worker nodes. If you're not deep into Kubernetes, don't worry. I'll show just enough to show you how HomeLab works rather than focus on Kubernetes mostly, but it is a simple cluster. One thing I would like to encourage you to do is to try and get into a habit of backing your things up and making them repeatable. So if you deploy stuff to your HomeLab server, whether this is Kubernetes or a virtual machine, try to figure out a way how to do this in an automated way. So for Kubernetes and cloud native workloads, um, GitOps tooling such as Argo CD or Flux are popular choices to make sure that you have repeatable infrastructure. If you lose it, you can recreate it from within the Git repository. Uh, if you decide to have VMs, then you can use tool like Ansible to provision um, software on your VMs and you can use Terraform to create them or Vagrant. There's all kinds of ways to do it, but the main idea being that you really want to make sure you actually have something like a Git repository and desired state um, somewhere expressed as data, which is mostly YAML files for Kubernetes. So I opted in to use Argo CD and it's a fairly simple setup how I do this. You can al always grow, but the idea is that you should have something that um, encapsulates your setup. Now we will look at my services and I'll show you a few things uh, to see and hopefully inspire you to get your own thing going. But since my home lab is mostly for experimenting and playing around with Kubernetes, this is what I have. So I have some observability pretty basic stuff. I have Argo CD, as I mentioned, I have various applications to manage things around. And from the useful stuff, I have quite a lot of backup. And the reason being is that I've had my share of wiping accidentally my root partition on Linux and uh, without backup, that's a pretty sad story. So I created a video about backup. If you're interested, I can link it in the video description. But uh, Long story short, I am using Minio or Minio, which is a S3 compatible blob storage, and I'm using Vault and other elements there to essentially create backup snapshots as I go. Uh, and I will show you a little bit of that as well. So let's jump quickly to a demo. 
So here you can see my homepage, which is also called homepage. Um, this is simply a dashboard of various links and shortcuts for my home lab, as well as some of the widgets. The reason why I like this specific um, dashboard for home lab is because it's 100% configured in YAML. So I can have a gigantic YAML file and I can simply add and change stuff there and uh, deploy it to Kubernetes and it will uh, shape itself as I want it. So let's have a brief tour. So first of all, as I mentioned, Argo CD, which is a GitOps tool, this is a way how I deployed almost anything uh, on my Kubernetes cluster. So here it is. I have currently uh, five apps. And if you're not familiar with Argo CD, don't worry about it. It's just a way to take something declarative like a Helm chart or just Kubernetes YAML and deploy it somewhere. So let me show you, for example, apps. And you can see we have here a bunch of deployments. So in this case, five various deployments that I have in this group. And uh, if I uh, and click it, there's quite a lot of uh, resources that you can scroll through here and see their health status. So that's Argo CD. Um, if you're interested in any of the elements that you're seeing on the screen, if you would like me to dive deeper into any of those, drop a comment, uh, let me know uh, in the video comments, and I'll, I'll do my best to create a video dedicated just for this specific topic. That's Argo CD. Another interesting one is Portainer. So it is also in my management section. Portainer is a little less known, but I find it quite interesting for visual management of Kubernetes clusters and Docker. So if you have Docker daemon, whether it's on your machine or remote, or in my case, Kubernetes, you can have this kind of nice dashboard which, with a bunch of added options. So custom templates is quite interesting option for Portainer where you can deploy your own applications. And as you can see, we can see, you know, namespaces, apps, you know, dashboard and so on and so forth. So pretty simple visualizer. I use it sometimes, but most of the time, if I have to see or do something on my Kubernetes cluster, I use K9S, which I'll show you in a moment, which is a terminal based viewer. So that's the second one. Now I have here various set of observability. As you probably know, Prometheus, pretty basic, Grafana. The thing with this is that um, there is a community edition Prometheus Helm chart that already contains uh, Grafana dashboards and a little bit more pre-configured Prometheus. I recommend it for home lab because you don't need to um, worry about you know, creating Grafana dashboards, which is a rabbit hole on its own. So Grafana dashboard, in my case, I just have, you know, your regular uh, run of the mill dashboards here. So for example, we can say um, namespace pods, for instance, and, you know, it will show you various data around it. Nothing exciting here. Um, Grafana, of course, and Prometheus are huge topics and uh, we, I don't want to dedicate the whole video about it, but it's an important component for any home lab, um, not only with Kubernetes, but other software as well. Here a little bit more um, kind of health related widgets from from the home page and uh, all of this is kind of letting me see at first glance that everything works well. I can see memory utilization, CPU, how many pods are there. So everything seems to be OK. And if I scroll a little bit more here in this Proxmox monitoring, I have my visualization layer here also with a widget again just at the first glance what's happening in the system i can quickly see um, how is my resources utilization going and so on here i have a few services um, one interesting service i want to show you it's called glances this is my proxmox server so my bare metal server and you can see here on the top um, those are the virtual machines that are actually running this is glances process itself uh, so not that much happening um, and you can easily see what's uh, what's up with your machine, uh, not only at this kind of dashboard level, but clicking on those services will just take you to, um, you know, in this case, glances service that is deployed on my bare metal server. So there's various ways what you can put here. You know, you 
can watch a lot of um, home lab videos and every everyone is different everybody's adding uh, you know different components i'm just showing you what is possible and what you can do so one thing i want to linger on a little bit is mini io and specifically um, the way how this can be used for uh, for backups so we can log in here and you can see that i have valero backup set up if you don't know valero it's a backup system for kubernetes so looks innocuous enough but you can see there's like an hourly snapshot those snapshots are very very sh small so this is this one megabytes and otherwise it's just kilobytes of data so i'm not worried about the the space but where this is stored is interesting the whole backup is stored on my nas server so there's a little bit of setup required to do it both from the nas uh, perspective i use synology um, and from Kubernetes to set up persistent volumes and persistent volume claims correctly and storage classes. But it's a really nice way of um, using remote server in this case, in, the, in my case it's NAS, to backup important data. Um, this has something to do with, you know, of course, safety that your data is you know, not going to be lost, but also um, as most of the home lab use cases, this is a lot about data sovereignty where you can say, this is my data, I, I want to control it. So definitely interesting. Also interesting because you can take the same setup and move it to S3 bucket, either to AWS S3 or any other compatible services like Cloudflare, for example. So very, very nice way of moving data around and kind of packaging it. All right, so a little bit more um, data here. I'm not going to show you everything, um, but you can see Proxmox itself. I also have Synology, uh, as I mentioned, with backups and so on, and some more data here at the bottom for my Kubernetes nodes. But this is what I do for my, um, for my home lab. Let me show you how it looks like uh, internally. So this is the viewer I mentioned earlier. It's called KNNS. Uh, you can interact with your Kubernetes cluster. Those are all the pods that are running here. So quite a lot of them. Um, you can also swap views to have a little bit more, more data here, for example. And then you can see, you know, sort it in different ways and so on. So, so the KNNS provides quite a lot of interesting options, how you can interact uh, with the whole cluster and so on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all this is within my repository. So I have, you know, GitOps folder, infra folder with uh, Terraform, and I'm also using DevBox. So there's a lot of elements here. This repository is not public, however. I am still, um, you know, working through uh, getting some uh, sensitive data cleaned up from here, uh, and I will um, definitely open source it and, and, you know, make it public for you guys to, to take a look. But that's what I wanted to show you. Um, so now, what are the benefits? Um, for me, there are kind of three key benefits. First of all, having a home lab, whether you would like to play with Kubernetes, other technologies, or having VMs, you know, whatever it might be, um, this is a really nice way to experiment. If you happen to destroy something, that's a no biggie. Um, you can have a dedicated VMs or elements that experiment, and you do not put strain on your own system. You externalize it in some form of server. So for me, personally, the experimentation part is the main driver for having a home lab. Um, then obviously you can also uh, you know, create a set of your own tools. I, for example, have a MCP server that is running uh, on my home lab as well. Um, for AI and, you know, K agent, all, all kinds of crazy stuff that you know, I play around with and either I leave it running there or delete it. You can have also, you know, you can deploy your own web app, right? You can deploy your own web app, make it public, secure your server and sanitize it a little bit and um, you can run your own little web app for free uh, or, you know, whatever um, service you would like. This requires a little bit more in-depth knowledge mostly about security, uh, authentication, authorization, and so on, but it's a really nice rabbit hole. And as I mentioned earlier, data sovereignty is a big one. So you buy a hard drive, you know, you can buy used uh, old um, Synology drive or, you know, other network drive. 
um, or even old server and m make a habit of grabbing your own data, whether it's, you know, email from Gmail or anything you can download and just keep it with you. Download it and keep it with you. You can, of course, go really deep into what kind of backup strategies you want to do, what disk you're using, and there's a lot of, you know, options and you can kind of go really in depth. But the easy and simple stuff is just get a disk, get a hard drive and, and store your data um, as much as you can. And, and then you kind of will have real ownership over, over your data. So those are key takeaways for me. There are obviously more reasons to have a home lab and to play with it. But I just wanted to show you what is possible, how I do it, and hopefully inspire you to, to get your own. A few resources, as always, you can read about various services that I'm using. And that's all for today. Um, I hope you enjoy um, the video. As always, I'm really interested in learning what are you using. If you want to show off your home lab or your dashboard, that would be really great. Uh, and let me know in the comments below if you would like me to zoom in on any of the things you, you've seen or you're interested in how to set certain things up. I'll be happy to make a video about it. All right, as always, thank you and see you in the next video.